We are proud Texans all, but we're not at all proud at what Rick Berry's done to ruin our state and ruin women's health care. He seemed to have one big oops moment after another. But this isn't about his oops moment, it's about another ugh moment. With Governor Perry's wrong-headedness on health care and his misbegotten battle against Planned Parenthood. His eagerness to do just as little as possible on health care and on public education that will not only deny opportunity for individuals, but will deny a Texas that can be competitive with the rest of the world if it doesn't use all the women power that it has in this great state. Yeah. Instead, we find a Texas that has more, a higher rate of uninsured women than any place in the country. And for many of these women, a health program is the only option. I think of a, a neighbor of mine, Sierra, over in East Austin, who's written me, I cannot help but feel that my life is on the line here. Well, she's right. This is a question of life and death for so many young women across this state. Let's keep in mind how we got the contraception rule in the first place. The National Academy of Sciences Institute of Medicine was the one that recommended this rule because it wasn't about good politics, it was about good health care and good medical science. You know, I look around this audience and I see a lot of people that are like Libby and me. We're pro-choice and we're pro-life. We believe in pro-life once a child is born, not just before. preventing child abuse, when it comes to assuring nutritional qualities for our children, when it comes to assuring educational opportunities. Rick Perry doesn't have a plan to replace Planned Parenthood. He doesn't have a plan to deal with the 40 percent of the women who rely on the women's health care program and who will be kicked out of their clinics if he's successful with this. Yesterday in the United States Congress on Capitol Hill, I was there as Republicans slashed the funds for the Public Health and Prevention Fund. Apparently the only way we can assure adequate financial assistance for students is to have some of them be sick when they go there. This is a program that provides important services for women in breast and cervical cancer screenings in so many other ways and that Kathleen Sebelius has said saves us ten dollars for every dollar that we spend. Now I know there are those in the media that have been saying oh this this war on women there's not really a war on women. Somebody forgot to tell Rush Limbaugh about the fact there's not a war on women. Someone forgot to tell those people that I served with in the House who tried to terminate all federal support for Planned Parenthood that there's not a war on women. Some of them forgot to tell the people in the committee that I serve on that we don't need to redefine rape and create a situation where the IRS would, would audit a woman who terminates a pregnancy. That sounds a little like a war on women. And of course it's broader than health care. Think about Wisconsin, where they repealed recently their equal pay law. Think about those who, are, those who are blocking our efforts to try to strengthen and close the loopholes in the equal pay law of 1963. And what about those who were opposed to extending the Violence Against Women Act and reauthorizing it? On one issue after another, even a Republican presidential candidate, apparent nominee, who's not sure if he would have signed the Lilly Ledbetter Act against job discrimination. Maybe they don't call it a war on women, but it doesn't sound like a peace conference to me. I don't think there are any Nobel Prize winners for the Nobel Peace Prize. Well, the real question today is, do we have a movement here or only a moment? I would say... The difference between this being a good rally and it being a great rally is what they used to say about orators back in classical times. Someone would give a speech and they'd say like this rally, oh that was a good speech, that was a great speech. But the difference in a great orator and a great rally are the people that say after it, let's march. And that's what we need to be doing today.
When you come here next year, you want my representative, our representative, who did such a great job today, Donna Dukes, to have some reinforcements. If we don't march, you can knock on some of these doors all day and all week long and nobody will answer because they don't view the world the way we do. If we don't march now, there won't be the help for the many people who can't come here to the Capitol and need our voice. So let's march on Monday, two weeks. That's when this uh, general, uh, this primary election begins. Let's march on May the 29th when we have a primary election. Let's march in November. And in the meantime, let's march on Twitter. Let's march on Facebook. Let's march with letters to the editor. Let's march with clients. Let's march by backing Annie's list and getting some more women serving in this building. Let's march and work together because the people that don't want us to march want to take us back, back, back to a time that we will never, never accept. We won't go backwards. We will never give up or give in. Let's march.